This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Along with Naomi Manea, this is John Ramey. We have a fantastic show today. Tyus Edney is here of the UCLA men's basketball coaching staff. Also, Dan Connors and Katie Camp from the women's volleyball team. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. Our first guest today on Bruin Talk is Tyus Edney. He is perhaps the architect of the most definitive moment, the 1995 championship run for UCLA men's basketball, defeating Missouri in a final mad dash at the buzzer. That was the 11th championship squad here at UCLA. Tyus has rejoined the Bruins as the director of basketball operations in between his two stints in Westwood. He played for Sacramento, Boston, and Indiana in the NBA. He also played professionally in Europe. Tyus Edney, welcome to Bruin Talk. Thanks for having me. Uh, welcome back to Westwood. You've been on the staff since August as the Director of Operations. Uh, how do you like your coaching career here with the Bruins? <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I think uh, it's a, a really, really good opportunity for me, and uh, it's just good to be back on campus, uh, be around you know, the guys and, and uh, Westwood and, and the alums and all the, all the students. You never played for Coach Howland. You played under uh, Jim Herrick. So it's a different coaching regime here. Um, has there been any adjustment for you, or is good basketball coaching good basketball coaching, and it's very simple? Yeah, it's, that's true. Good, good coaching is good coaching. I mean, uh, Coach Howland is an, an excellent coach, and, and I was fortunate to, to be around Coach Herrick and Coach Howland now, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to the season. I want to learn a lot from them, and, and uh, you know, so far I've already learned a lot. And, you know, I'll make, he's making all the guys better and the, and the team better, and, and I'm excited for the season. What's it like being on the operations side of things versus being on the player side of things? A um, little bit different. Uh, there's a lot of administrative duties, um, you know, the scheduling, getting, you know, helping the guys out in any way I can, helping coach out. Um, you know, just a lot of things that are maybe are behind the scenes that most people don't know goes on. Uh, those are a lot of my duties. and, and uh, along with helping out, you know, coach doing whatever he needs me to do and, uh, you know, just being around, I guess, being a, being a mentor to the guys and things like that. 1995 is a few years ago now, and we were talking before the beginning of the show about how old some of us were when your great shot and your great run happened. Uh, how do you deal with that as a person, as an athlete? Because obviously you've had 15 years of life success transpire since 1995, but it's at the forefront of people's minds when they meet you. 
How do you deal with that? Uh, is it ever a struggle to say, hey, I'm Tyus Edney, I'm a grown man, I have a coaching career, or are you happy to celebrate what you uh, did in 1995? Uh, I'm happy to celebrate it. I think it's it's something that is always a part a part of me and 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 my experience here at UCLA as, as as along with the fans. I mean, I think we, you know, we we had a great great uh, year, great experience, and and everybody felt that. I think around around the city and and uh, when people bring it up for me, I I don't mind hearing about it ever. So uh, they're all good memories. Did you know you had it the whole way against Missouri? <laughs> no. Uh, I can't say I knew I knew I had it the whole way. I mean, I think uh, you know I was desperation time, so uh, it's not not a lot of thinking. There's a lot of instinct and reaction. So uh, I was glad when it when it did go in. So you're back at UCLA. I'm going to ask a little bit about your UCLA career here. How do you think your UCLA education side of things helped you in your professional pursuits? Oh, that that's just such a big part of of uh, what I'm able to do now. I think. Uh, being that I, I was able to graduate and, and uh, just have the experience to be a student athlete, I think it's it's very difficult, you know, for that for the athletes to, uh, you know, learn how to balance that, and, and I think that carries over in everything that you do for the rest of your life, and um, you know, I'm just fortunate to to have had that experience, and and without that, I think, you know, a lot of things, a lot of choices that you make, uh, you know, could have been different, but uh, you know, I'm just glad that I was able to you know, to come here to this, this excellent university and get my degree and, and, and move on to better things now. Now you're in the coaching pipeline, as they say. Uh, is your ultimate goal to be a head coach? And since you played at the NBA, and that is now an option for you as well, because there are many former players who are head coaches, uh, not only at the collegiate level, but at the professional level. So is that your goal? Uh, yeah, I can see myself doing that one day. I mean, that's, that's something that I would... I would uh, I would like to, to pursue one day. I think um, basketball has been a part of my life uh, basically since I was four years old, and, and uh, uh, I've, it's brought me a lot of opportunities and, and um, you know for me to stay around the game and and, and uh, try to help younger players and things like that to get better. Uh, you know I, I would I would definitely like to maybe try that one day. You mentioned the, the difficult task of balancing being a student athlete. You were a student athlete here. Do you think that helps you relate to the student athletes that you're now helping? I think so. I mean, I think uh, just you know, the, the struggles that you go through, I think um, with, the, with the pressure of playing at a high level, as along with the pressure of, of you know, succeeding in, in academics at a high level. And, and uh, you know, I know it's a lot of, a lot of stress involved, and, and it can, can weigh on the guys, and, and I, I hope they do come to me and, and I'll, I'll go to them also and just try to help them to get through it the best way that they can and, and uh, you know I, I definitely feel I can relate to them in, in that sense and help them through the whole process. You played professionally in Europe in addition to the NBA. What was it like to play pro basketball on a different continent in, a, in many <laughs> different cultures? Was it, was it weird? Was it different? Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely an experience. I think uh, something that, that changes you as a person. Uh, living, just you know, immersing yourself into the culture and, and learning uh, you know, how things work over there is just completely different. You know, I think uh, we're, we're pretty spoiled here in America. <laughs> I mean, everything is pretty easy. And, and uh, over there, you, you definitely notice the differences and, and then uh, how, how the people live and, and the cultures. And, and uh, the, the, the big key for me over there was uh, the more open-minded and the more willing that I was to to learn about those cultures and things, and the easier it was for me to transition. And and you know, I've had great great experience over there, um, championships and things like that. Experience winning over there also, and and I uh, really enjoyed my time. How was the basketball? I mean, they got that weird key. I guess the big men shoot pretty well. Uh, how how was the game different? Um, it's it's kind of like college. I would relate it to with uh, you know grown men playing. You know, guys with experience have been playing a long time, stronger. Um, and uh, I think the, the time I was over there, the game, it, it progressed and it changed. I think it got a lot, lot faster. Um, I think they, they play, you know, the guys are more athletic. I think the level, the skill level has gone up. Um, they, they're really big over there on, on fundamentals and teaching, you know, the game the right way. And, you know, a lot of na now it's like been a, glo it's a global sport. I mean, they come here to learn. You know, we go over there to learn things like that. So it's like... I think the basketball world and the levels have all kind of equaled out a little bit. I think you've seen that in the, you know, with the USA teams and things like that, how difficult it is for them to win now. But, uh, you know, it's definitely good basketball over there, and, and it's tough. 
Playing in an NC2A tournament is always exciting, let alone winning it. We've mentioned that you won amazingly in 1995. Describe that experience for us. Oh, that the whole experience of, of the tournament is is it's basically what you what you you live for. I think as a player, I mean, you first you want to make the tournament, and then uh, you know when you're there, it's like it's a new season and it's a new opportunity to show the world on you know on a big stage what what you can do and what you've you know been been uh, working towards all season and uh, it's just an exciting exciting experience I mean the whole run um, you know it was it was a little pressure when I was you know my senior year obviously when we were on the ropes but uh, I think for us for example after that I mean we were just you know the sky was a limit you know it was just it was just like a roller coaster and, and uh, but a, but a fun one. <laughs> now it hasn't been too long since you played here at UCLA and now but enough time has transpired that there, are, I assume, could be some differences in how the game is played. What do you perceive to be the biggest differences between student athletes now and when you were a player in Westwood? Um, I think the, one of the main differences seems to be mentally, I think. Um, a lot of the players now have a, you know, the, 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 uh, the aspiration, I guess, to, to go to the NBA, and, and they're really, I think, focusing more on that. Um, I think uh, now you have a lot of, of, of teams that, that are, don't stay together as long and uh, you know sometimes I think that, that makes uh, the team suffer. Um, I think also uh, that, that the more the teams are staying together, the teams that are you know together longer, the guys that grow and get better as players, their teams are better. So you have I think a lot of um, maybe smaller teams, not as you know the major main, you know the Dukes and UCLA's. And, uh, they're not always just the shoe in to be in the Final Four now. So uh, I think the game has changed in that sense to where now you have, you know, the, the, ba the power balance, I guess you could say, is, is more, more even now. Being a basketball player at UCLA, we have to bring up Coach Wooden. Tell us a little bit about how his legacy impacted you, either as a Bruin or just as a basketball player for your whole career. Um, for me, it was just, it was, it was a, a thrill when I, when I saw him. I mean, he used to come to our practices and, and just him being at all the games. And, and uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's almost surreal. You just can't believe he's, he's coming, like, to watch us. Like, he's watching us. Like, he cares about what, you know, we're doing. And, and, uh, but that's just the kind of person he was. And, and uh, you know, I, I, when I was playing, I heard through the grave that he, he liked how I played and things like that. And, and that just... You know, that, that really inspired me because this is the greatest coach ever. And, and to know that he thought that I was a good player was, was, <laughs> was unbelievable for me and, and uh, in, inspiring. Let's talk about the 2010-2011 Bruins team. Mm -hmm. uh, how far do you think they can go and uh, what do you think are appropriate goals for the squad? I think um, right now I think we, we need to focus on, on how we start the season. Um, Obviously, I think everyone wants to wants to win the Pac-10. I think you, and when you're making goals, I think you take each goal each step at a time. And, and right now, you know, our, our mind is to win the Pac-10. Um, you know, with the guys, they've really been uh, working hard, and, and and I'm I'm happy to see that that they're really driven. I think to uh, have a good good season and a good year. And and uh, you know, I feel it. I feel like we're going to do do well this year, and and uh, I'm looking forward to the start. What are you looking forward the most to as you return to UCLA? Um, being at a game and, and being down there on the floor and feeling the energy and the, and the fans and, and uh, you know, just the competitive spirit and, and uh, you know, it feels like I'll be, you know, kind of back out there being a Bruin again. And, and uh, you know, that was an a exciting time in my life. And, and uh, you know, looking forward to, to trying to help this, these next teams you know get back to to the championship level. Tyus Edney is back in Westwood the hero from the 1995 Bruins national championship team is the new director of operations for men's basketball. Welcome back and thanks for being with us on Bruin Talk. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bruin Talk will return after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UC 
UCLA. Champions meet here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our next guests, let's take a look at the Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Shannon Murakami of the Women's Cross Country Team as our Student Athlete of the Week. A senior from Saugus, California, Shannon recently posted a top 20 finish at the Notre Dame Invitational. Her time also contributed to the team's 338-point 12th place finish. She also finished third in the recent Stanford Invitational and was UCLA's top finisher. At the Cal State Fullerton season opener, Shannon led her team to an overall first place finish, winning by a margin of nearly 50 points over the second place team. Since 2009, Shannon has been UCLA's top runner and has always provided a source of energy, inspiration, and leadership for her teammates. Congratulations, Shannon, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. Our next guests are from the women's volleyball team, assistant coach Dan Connors. He's in his fifth season with the Bruins. They've made the postseason each year. He has been on the staff. Third-year junior Katie Camp is also with us. She currently leads the Pac-10 in blocks per set. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. So it's your fifth year. It's your second head coach you've worked under. How has that transition been, and, and how's uh, new coach Seeley uh, measuring up? Well, it's been, it's been a fun transition, you know. It, with with Andy he's been here for 43 years and I got to learn a lot under Andy and and uh, I'm actually learning more from Andy now than I did when I was under him because we're in a transition period and and I'm pulling things from uh, from what I learned from him which is is nice to have that and um, Mike's been great um, great to work with uh, always looking forward and moving forward and if we hit bumps in the road which we do it's it's not something that we dwell on. We just work together to, and move past them, and, and it's been a really nice, easy, smooth transition. Katie, you're a junior now, which means you're an upperclassman. How do you plan on being a leader for your underclassmen this year? Um, I just try to work hard every day in the gym. Um, our captains do a really good job setting the tone, and I just try to follow them. Um, we have a really good group of girls, so it's not too hard to um, set the tone in the gym because everyone's working hard, and it's easy. It's fun. Dan, you played uh, here at UCLA. You were on a team that was the runner-up in 2001 for the national championship. Talk about some of the differences between the men and the women's game. Well, uh, men uh, are motivated different than, uh, than women. I think uh, you can uh, Tread lightly get, get, in the guy's, <laughs> get in the guy's face and yell at him, and that might motivate him. Where um, with the women, you have to be a little more nurturing in the way, in the way you motivate. And it's just the way... Uh, Men and women are built, I, I think, and neither one's wrong or right. It's just that's the way it is. Um, but the nice thing about it is, is it challenges you as a coach. You know, I coached uh, with the men's team at Northridge for uh, three years and got to learn how to, how to motivate those guys. And, and now coaching with the women's, it's uh, another ta challenge, a different challenge. This question can go to both of you. You can answer from different perspectives. So far this season, there have been a lot of away games. How do you feel about the schedule for this season? Um, I think playing on the road is, is nice. It, it puts you in hostile environments, and uh, um, you're not you're out of your comfort zone. So it's it's a good challenge to play on the road, and uh, I think it makes you more cohesive to to be on the road with your team, staying in hotels. So um, you know, road matches, I don't see them as a negative. Um, they might be a little little tougher, a little more difficult to win, but the challenge is is great for the growth of the team. Yeah, I don't really see the road match as like a, um, a challenge either. I think home matches are fun because, you know, you can play in your gym and you have your friends cheering for you and you have all that positive energy. But at the same time, like you have just as much motivation as when you're on the road, you know, playing at a full house for another team cheering against you. That just gives like an extra motivation that can like really push you to an upset or a big win. This is your fifth season on the staff. So you have four complete seasons, four complete memories of four other teams. How does this edition compare with the other ones you've seen? Uh, well, I think every year is a new challenge. Um, this year we have a little more change than we have in the past with the new coaching staff and um, eight or nine new players on the team. And um, it takes a little longer in this situation to, to find that cohesion and, and figure out what everyone else is about. Um, when, when teams and groups have been together for a long time, they understand each how each other work and and things are a little new for for 
quite a large portion of the staff and, and players. So it's taking a little longer to work out those um, cohesion issues, but that's just part of the, the challenge and the job, and, and we're working through them. I mean, you guys are 11-3, and three, so obviously it hasn't been that difficult. <laughs> Has that start surprised you at all? Um, I don't think so. You know, we, we challenge the players every day in the practice gym, and, and they've, they've stepped up in practice, and, and uh, I think that performance is, is shown on the court. Did you expect to be 11-3? and three? I mean, I don't really expect to um, have, like, a certain record. I just think that our coaches do a really good job of making sure we stay focused for each game and not, like, look in the future, which is something that I really like. And I think it's kept our team on a really balanced level, so I think that has been able to help us um, when it comes to match play. Katie, how did you start playing volleyball, and when did you decide that it was something that you're going to want to do for a long time? Um, I played it, started playing eighth grade. Obviously, my height, um, people were like, oh, you play basketball, you play basketball, but I actually always played tennis. And um, I don't know, I just was kind of like got burned out of tennis, practicing like every day for hours, and so I just want to try something new. My mom played volleyball in college at Williams, it's a small liberal arts school at Massachusetts. So I just tried out for my middle school team, and then I played at Triangle Volleyball Club in North Carolina, and I don't know, I just really liked it. I liked the team atmosphere, I liked the competitiveness of it, and I just kind of kept going with it. So. Dan, you've got two sophomores that are performing well this year, uh, Rachel Kidder and Bojana Todorovic have uh, been achieving personal bests. Uh, what's it like to see the underclassmen come of age so quickly? Well, it's nice. It's really nice. And, uh, you know, everyone's equal out there. If you're a freshman, you can, you can beat out a, a senior. So your class doesn't necessarily determine who you are. And uh, we kind of preach that, you know. If, if you're going to be able to perform a, as a freshman, then you're going to be out there on the court. And, um, the advantage that the upperclassmen have is, is experience, and um, it's nice to have the, the younger sophomores getting that experience now so that when they do get into their junior and senior seasons, they'll be um, well-developed. I imagine it's especially important to have strong underclassmen when you only have two seniors on the team. Tell us a little bit how having only two seniors affects the leadership of the team. Um, well, it makes the, the leadership important. You know, when you have a lot of uh, younger players looking up to one or two, um, th it's harder because there's not that tone set every day. It's the, the majority is the younger class, and um, it's, hard, it's harder to bring them all up to the mindset of, of what, the, uh, what the leaders want. So it's a challenge for the leaders to, to be consistent in what they do and, and work to bring all the, uh, all the younger players, the players that are new to the system, to up to the, to the right mindset. Katie, you're a middle blocker. Tell us a little bit about what that position is and why you're so good at it. <laughs> um, well, middle is primary for blocking, obviously a middle blocker, but um, you know, we really have to help out the front row, get a lot of touches. Um, it's the main part of the defense. I mean, obviously, if you don't have a block, you can't really dig around it and you can't run your offense. So, um, I don't know. I, I guess just practice Practice is what really makes it um, perfect, I guess. I mean, Dan is my, like, blocking coach, and he's, like, really helped me these past three years of reading setters and knowing when to release the outside and just, like, strategy. And I feel like um, we connect really well, like, on the court and um, – you know, we obviously have our disagreements sometimes, but um, he's a really good coach, and he really tells me, like, what to do and, like, what I need to work at, and I just feel like I've um, flourished because of the good coaching stuff. So you've got to be a little bit psychic when you're reading the other team. <laughs> how, does that, how does that work? What do you look for? Um, I mean, you really you start with the pass. You have to look at the pass, see where it is. Um, if it's off the net, you can know that it's not probably going to go to the middle, and then you can say, like, okay, what, one of my pin hitters is more important, and it's just kind of like a process you go through. Um, if it's a good pass, you have to look at the setter and know if she's a threat and what her tendencies are. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it, but I mean... It sounds practice. like a lot. I mean, it sounds much just like football, but I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> the men's team usually dresses up in spirited and funny attire for the women's games. Yeah. So, Katie, does this help with the energy of the team? And Dan, is this something you used to do? This uh, didn't exist when I was a player. <laughs> I think it was around before I was... A player and then uh, disappeared for a little while and then came back but it's nice to have those guys there supporting and being rowdy and, and creating a nice atmosphere yeah I mean it's awesome they come to the gym they bring so much fire 
Poly is such a great atmosphere already that um, they just add to it, and it really makes us want to like play really well for our fans. Dan, you played professionally in Spain. Uh, how does that experience shape you as a coach, and what from that experience can you uh, pass along to the players? Um, Spain gave me quite a bit of patience because I didn't speak Spanish very well, and so um, the learning process of what uh, what the coaching staff over there wanted for me uh, took a little longer. And uh, were they not speaking much English? <laughs> no, they didn't speak much English. <laughs> wow. So, um, I had to learn Spanish, and then one of the players had to translate for me, and and so it, it gave me patience, which is is a I feel like a, a great virtue for a coach to have. And um, the experience of being immersed in another culture was uh, incredible. And um, I would suggest that for, for any of our athletes. Did you catch any bullfights? I, I caught them on TV. <laughs> um, they, he was a matador, they, for sure. Yeah, well, I was at Northridge afterwards. So. Oh, there you go. Oh. There's matadors. a connection. Yeah, there you go. So far, great job on this season. As we mentioned, that 11-3 record. What are you looking forward to, and what are your goals for the rest of the season as a coach and as an athlete? I think as a coach, we're just looking to get better every day in practice mm -hmm. and and uh, keep progressing as a team and a group, and and uh, you know make sure our communication is there so that um, our cohesion can build, and um, ultimately we just take it one day at a time and and look to get better every day and and build from there and. Um, if there are setbacks, we're not concerned with them. We're, we're looking forward. Yeah, I think our biggest um, goal is just to work hard every day in the, in the practice gym because, you know, we're not as, like, physical as a lot of other teams in the Pac-10, so we can't rely on, um, like, big hitters just to put the ball away every time. So we really have to work on, like, staying in system, and that's something that we can only do in practice. So, Katie, you're originally from North Carolina. Where's your accent? Um, well, I don't really have a southern drawl, I guess, but, no. um, I've moved around a lot. I was born in San Francisco and then moved to Indiana twice and then moved to North Carolina. So I'm kind of like a mix of the Midwest, South, West, I guess. But, um, yeah, I, I just moved to LA because I wanted to get out of the South and experience something different. And so far it's been awesome. Dan Connors and Katie Camp with the UCLA women's volleyball team. Thanks, you guys, for joining us, and good yeah. luck in the Pac-10 season. I know you didn't want to say anything here, but uh, it should be your championship this year. So good luck. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us on Bruin Talk for Naomi Manea. This is John Ramey. We'll talk to you next time.